All right, what's going on guys? Halloween's in like what, like two days now? I still don't have a costume, but I carved a pumpkin last night for the first time in my life. Like my, my friends are in the 30s, I'm 28, and literally first time I ever carved a pumpkin. It was not easy, it did not go well. Um, I like, I underestimated what I could do. Here's what I, I wanna do like a five-headed dragon, like Tiamat from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I was overly ambitious. I had a hard time carving the hole in the pumpkin and then realized I had to scale my design down. It was falling apart for me, I had to use toothpicks, whatever. My friends are like, oh, but you're like an art teacher, you're supposed to be able, and I'm like, I could draw a pumpkin, I could draw a pumpkin and procreate, I could make a pumpkin and, and you know, like whatever you want digitally. I'm not a sculpture person like some of my uh, some of my other art teacher friends. So I was telling this to my first period today, and one of my first period students is just like, oh, could, could you show us how to draw a pumpkin and procreate? I'm like, yeah, cool, let's do that. So, uh, so I played around. Uh, and here's what I got, and this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna draw jack-o'-lanterns and procreate. But like my whole goal with this is that I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna just draw a jack-o'-lantern and procreate. I wanted to draw a pumpkin that we could carve into and procreate to show that I can carve a pumpkin. It just might not be like a physical carving or whatever. Okay, so let's get after it. So procreate uh, on like an iPad, what, like sixth generation? And like a rubber tip stylus is falling apart on me. Oh my God. So I'm gonna be a struggle busing. No, no Apple pencil, no pen pressure, no nothing. Uh, you should be fine. Look, I drew a little ghost too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new document. Screen size um, will work just fine. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my colors, um, my color palette. So I'll go ahead and change the background color by tapping on that. And because a pumpkin is orange, let's go ahead and give a dark violet background. It's uh, gonna be really contrasty and still in line with the uh, Halloween theme. Something dark so that our bright orange will stand out. Now you see I already have a color palette here. Let's go ahead and make a new one just so that you can work along with me. I'm gonna use five, maybe six colors for this after this violet. Five, maybe six colors. So what I'm gonna do is down in my color menu, I'm gonna click on palettes in that bottom right, and you can see the one that I've already made. Um, if I scroll up with palettes, whoops, 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 I, I missed. Uh, there should be that plus sign in that top right there, right by palettes, I'm gonna click that plus sign, and I'm gonna hit create new palette, and now I have a blank palette. And what I can do is, if I go back to the disc in the bottom left, the disc, I have this untitled palette here that's blank. If I tap anywhere on that palette, I create a swatch of the color that is currently selected. So orange is the obvious one here. We want orange. And tell you what, we want orange, and I'm gonna say that we want yellow, because yellow is gonna be a good way for us to shade our orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap a square for yellow. Um, let's go ahead and give ourselves a, like, let's give ourselves a darker color to shade with. So how about like a maroon? I'm gonna go down to like, red, burgundy, something like that. Not too dark, but also not too vibrant, and boom, and there's a maroon. Um, I want a dark color, I want something to be my dark color, so let's grab a violet, kind of like the background, not too dark, let's still keep this a colorful painting. Um, and then I want I want something white, but not actually white. When when I paint like with, with actual oil paint or acrylic paint, I'll usually make like a white that is yellow tinted or blue tinted. So let's go up to yellow and let's grab like almost white, but still a little tint of yellow. Boom. And there it is, five colors. An orange, a yellow, uh, like a maroon, a violet, and then this like almost yellow or almost white. Um, and that's your color palette. So let's get after it. Let's go ahead and select our orange color. I'm gonna be using the monoline brush, which I've used in, in past tutorials, the monoline brush. It's under calligraphy. Um, and I open that up, like these are the settings I'm using, 67% streamline. I don't think it's gonna be too specific for this tutorial. Um, and then I'll use the grunge brush, which I'll show again. So let's draw our ellipse first in oval, because it's the basic shape of a pumpkin. It's okay if things get awkward. So I'm gonna watch what I do. I'm gonna draw my shape, but I'm gonna hold down at the end. I'm not gonna let go. I'm gonna draw an ellipse, and it's okay if it's a little lumpy. I'm gonna draw an ellipse, and when I close, I'm gonna hold, 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 and then procreate like auto corrects that ellipse for me, and I can drag that around, and boom. Uh, we've done that in past tutorials, right? Now what I can do, that's a pretty wide looking pumpkin. What I can do is with that layer still selected, I can press the arrow tool at the, at the top, and down at the bottom, I can make sure free transform is selected, and I can like stretch and like, kind of rescale my pumpkin. Maybe make it a little bit smaller so I have some room for a stem maybe. I'm gonna squish it, maybe make it, you know. All pumpkins are different. 
And that's what's awesome about this is your pumpkin could be not the exact same as my pumpkin. And it might even be more accurate. It might look better. I don't know. Whatever. Pumpkins are great. They're going to be lumpy. They're going to be imperfect. And it's going to be good for us if we're just learning how to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the color swatch, right? I drag. Oh, I got to select my color again. I got to drag that circle and drop it on there. And now I've got an orange pumpkin real easily. All right. What's my next step? My next step is going to be to start shading. But pumpkins kind of like have that curvature it. To it, curvature to it, we're working digitally. Let's give ourselves a guideline. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna switch to my almost white and still with the monoline brush, I'm gonna give myself these curvy guidelines to show myself where I'm gonna shade. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start again on a layer above my pumpkin layer. I'm gonna draw a straight line down. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight. It's a pumpkin, it's, it's goofy, it's, it's organic. And then I'm gonna draw three arcs coming from the top and bottom on one side. One, two, three. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three. I'm gonna delete this layer eventually, but for now it is a guide. For now it is gonna show me where to be shading. Um, and shading, let's keep it loose. Let's keep it organic. I'm not gonna be too perfect. I'm not gonna do a whole ton of smudging. Um, Let's go ahead and make a new layer, put it beneath the, uh, the guide layer, but above the pumpkin layer, and let's grab our maroon, our burgundy. Now let's grab our texture brush, which is going to be under textures, and I'm going to use the grunge brush. Uh, these are the settings I have. I'm pretty sure they're default. Uh, and then I'm going to change the size a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to drop it to around like 50-ish percent opacity because I don't have pen pressure and that's totally okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade along the lines. And I see that I'm shading outside of the pumpkin. So we've done this before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on that layer and clipping mask it. Click on clipping mask. And what that does is it clips the layer to only appear where the layer beneath it is showing. It means that I can't accidentally shade outside of the pumpkin. So I shade that burgundy. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back to orange and then repaint the right side of the line orange. So the left side of the line is burgundy. I'm gonna switch back to burgundy, maroon, I don't know. I don't know if I'm using the word burgundy wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna shade along the line. That's like nice texture, like pumpkins are so lumpy, dude. The, the pumpkin last night that I was working with, it was so weird. And a really easy way to switch between two colors is just to press and hold on the color swatch. I'm gonna press and hold on the color swatch and it'll switch to my previous color. So then I'm gonna paint back the right side orange. I'm gonna do this for a little, a little bit. So I might like, you know, fast forward here or time. All right, now again, it's okay if it's not perfect. Have you seen a pumpkin? Pumpkins are not perfect, right? Like, like do not worry about how precise you're being. Trust me, it's gonna be fine. I, I, I drew this twice, and I liked my second one a lot better than my first one. Um, we'll see if I even like this one more than my second one. So now let's do a little bit more shading. I'm gonna switch back to burgundy. I'm gonna shade even like the right side a little bit more, but like kind of like the sphere tutorial that I've done before, uh, let's pick a light source. Let's say the light's coming from, in this case, the top of left. Um, I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and clipping mask that layer as well. Increase the size of my brush. Maybe decrease the opacity a little bit. And I'm just gonna, you know, add a little bit of shading in there. To make it even darker, I'll add a light layer of my violet, my dark color here, right? A light layer. And I'm just kind of curving around there. And then to make the top a little bit better, we can add a little bit, little bit, little bit of like yellow to the highlight, maybe even a tiny little like light layer of white. And now we've got kind of like a shaded sphere happening here, right? So now what I can do is I can hide my guides and I have the basics of a pumpkin happening here. So it's still this awkwardly perfect oval. Let's go ahead and change that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch the layers together to merge the shading with the ellipse. I'm gonna pinch them together. I'm gonna pinch them together, boom. And then 
I am going to erase a little bit of the edges to give it like a lumpy, uh, a lumpy feel to it. I grab my eraser tool and the eraser that I'm using, I am also using the monoline brush as my eraser. So I click on my eraser, select monoline under, under calligraphy. And now how I'm gonna erase this is I'm gonna have like a little kind of like wavy, um, almost like the cloud-like shape when you're like doodling clouds, right? Um, and I'm gonna have the dips be where, uh, it's too big of a brush, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shrink that up. I'm gonna have the dips be, whoops, the dips be where the shadows touch. And I can go ahead and clean up this. Again, it is okay if it is not perfect. I don't think perfect even exists when we're drawing pumpkins. I don't think perfect, e I've seen pumpkins of all colors even, right? Um, I don't think perfect exists. So don't worry if it looks weird. Pumpkins are weird by nature. How many times have I said that? Um, Cool, cool. So I'm just like quickly, quickly making it look even lumpier and weirder just to further emphasize the fact that pumpkins are weird. I'm weird. <laughs> uh, all right, cool, cool, cool. There's the top. Let's go ahead and, and make the bottom a little lumpy now too. Zoom out. And now I got like a pumpkin looking shape. I think it's missing the stem. Maybe it's a little bit like wide. I don't care. It's a wide pumpkin, right? So what I would like to do here now is I would like to duplicate my layer and hide one of the duplicates. That way, if I ever want to carve another pumpkin, I already have a pumpkin, uh, I already have a pumpkin painted, right? Now let's carve our pumpkin. This is the cool part, right? Uh, if, you're, if you're thinking like pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern shapes, you can do what everyone else does and just Google jack-o'-lantern or, or like, you know, pumpkin carving faces and try to find one or try to find like eye shapes. I'm gonna do the very basic like triangle eyes. Um, but for this, because I wanted to carve into this pumpkin, we are using our eraser. And once again, we're using the monoline eraser. And I am going to literally erase my carving. And I should see the violet behind it, right? So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do like, you know, like the weird evil uh, tri like triangle eyes. Um, I'll go ahead and just draw the line out, and then use a bigger eraser to make my life easier. I'm gonna fast forward this one too. All right, it takes a little bit of time, but honestly still like compared to the time that I had to spend like carving an actual pumpkin, not bad. Okay, so we know that the inside of the pumpkin is supposed to be brighter because we put the candle on the inside of the pumpkin and all that, right? So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna keep it on top for now. I'm gonna switch to my monoline brush uh, with the actual brush, right? I'm gonna use my almost white color and I'm gonna draw a shape that fills up the entire backside of the pumpkin without sticking out from it. I still recording here? I really hope I am. All right, uh, so I'm gonna, again, draw a shape. Carefully, carefully, that fills up the entire design of the pumpkin. And then I'm gonna drag that color in there. And now what I can do, check this out, what I can do is I can drag this layer beneath this and boom, the inside of my pumpkin's lit up. Now from here, I can start playing with things. From here, I could, on this very layer, um, I could grab my uh, texture brush a little bit back in textures and grunge, um, textures and grunge, and maybe we want like the inside to be even like whiter, whiter just for some contrast, right? Uh, bring that out. I might even like add a light layer of, of orange to the soap, Oop, orange to the sides. You know what I gotta do? I got a clipping mask it. I got a clipping mask this, or alpha lock. I'll alpha lock this layer. Maybe just to create some contrast. I could smudge that if I really wanted to, right? Um, maybe I wanna just paint a little bit more with the uh, off white, the almost white. Cool. Um, what I can also do now is give the 3D, we know that pumpkin's got like width to the actual carving itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another new layer beneath the pumpkin layer above the, the background layer now, right? Grab my monoline brush once more, and I'm gonna grab my yellow color, 
and I'm gonna paint the like the inside like the 3D the depth lines. Uh, be, like normally I would say like pick like one side and paint only that side, but here like it depends on how you carved it, right? Like sometimes I would like have the, the knife facing that way, sometimes the knife was facing that way. Ah oh, man, I. I enjoy drawing the pumpkin much more than I enjoy carving the pumpkin. So I'm gonna like say that my 3D exists on the left side there. So I'll draw it on the left side here too. Um, and maybe I'll draw it on the left side of the tooth and I can erase to trim kind of thing. Left side of the tooth. And again, it's imperfect because like when you carve a pumpkin or when I carve a pumpkin, it is very imperfect. So I'm not really concerned with, with you know, the 3D being perfect. Um, Oops, switch back to my brush, do another 3D. I'm gonna give the 3D a little bit of width on these sides, like a little bit of a dimension to it. Do the inside there. And you know, how much you wanna do is gonna be a detail question. How much detail do you wanna put into it? And there I go, right? Um, what I would even do is check this out. If I alpha lock my 3D layer, right? My, my yellow layer, if I alpha lock that one, I can grab my texture brush again and just add a little bit of shading to that. I can uh, grab my texture brush again, that was under textures and grunge, and I can add a little bit of orange to it, a little bit of just like shading, right? Just to give a little bit of like dimension and depth there. I might even grab like the burgundy and do a light, 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 like even darker, right? And now that looks real 3D. Cool, cool. A um, lot of things you can have in here, right? You can like carve whatever you want into it. I can always go back and like hide, like hide this one and, and bring this guy back up front and carve a new pumpkin, right? Um, you know, like we want to do a stem? Let's make a stem. I feel like pumpkins have stems. I'm gonna make a new layer on the bottom of everything, grab my mono line brush, um, draw a quick stem. This video is getting a little long and I, you know, just want to draw a quick pumpkin, but hey, there we go, there's a stem. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to fill that shape. I did it. And then uh, alpha lock, so I can shade. Alpha lock, grab my texture brush. I'm gonna shade like a little bit of violet uh, to, to give some shadows to it. And then maybe a little bit of orange for some highlights. I mean, and dude, while I'm shading here, I could, I could go back and shade like this layer too. I could alpha lock this layer and add a little bit of white in there. Like a little bit of like highlights because I think, you know, when, when er, it's a little wide, I'll shrink my brush a little bit. That's a little thin. Because I think like when, when pumpkins have a lot of light on them, they, they tend to have, you know, a little bit of like highlight action going on. And there it is. That's, that's my jack-o'-lantern. Maybe next year I'll be better at carving it and won't need to uh, draw my own. But in the meantime, uh, happy Halloween. Um, I still need to figure out a costume. Thanks for watching, guys.